So looking at the topic of are your prayers reaching God? So it's uh, Revelations chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. And that reads, Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Okay. So there's an angel with a censer. He's at an altar in heaven. So he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of God's people. And uh, so the smoke, together with the prayers, he presented to God from his hand. So let's see. So did the angel give the prayers to God there? Uh, yes, they gave it. I guess. Yeah. So he. Yeah. So they went to God from His hands. So in a sense. So when the prayer was mixed with the incense, it became incense. So when the prayer became like incense, that was a good thing. That was better than if it hadn't. So once it got mixed with the incense, it was apparently better than before it was mixed, before mm -hmm. there was incense involved. Okay. And so we also see incense in the, uh, the tabernacle. So when Moses, they created in the tabernacle, there was an altar of incense. And uh, Marsha, you have Exodus 30, 34 to 38. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then the Lord said to Moses, take fragrant spices, gum resin, anarcha, and galbanum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of, perf of a perfume. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the testimony in the tent of meeting. Where I will meet with you, it shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from his people. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of incense. Right? This is good. You never noticed that before, <laughs> did you? Well, I don't know. So where is this special incense to be used? Right in the, the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, nowhere else. So if anybody I else uses this incense, then cut them off from the, whole, from the people. If anybody else tries to use this incense. So it's most holy. He says it's pure and it's sacred. So we're mixing the most holy, pure, and sacred with our prayers. And that was... David wanted his prayers to be that way, to be presented to God. So, so the prayers were mixed with, with the incense to make them most holy, pure, and sacred. Okay. And let's see. So now if we look at Luke chapter 1. So Zechariah was a priest also. So the priest in the Old Testament is the one who would, who would stand before the altar. And so it's the same in the New Testament. So Luke chapter 1, verse 8 through 13, it says, Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving a priest as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled with grip and was gripped with fear. 
But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will call him John. So the worshipers are praying outside, and the priest was inside at the incense. So the priest was there with the incense, assisting to get the prayers of the worshipers through. And so we see that here on the physical side, the priest stood at the altar of incense to help get the prayers of the worshipers through. And then we saw in the heavenly, there was an angel that stood there with the incense to help get the prayers through to God. Mm. So what we see is uh, the tabernacle, the temple, there's two altars. There's an altar for burnt offering. There's an altar for incense. The burnt offering was a blood offering to atone for our sins. Mm -hmm. The incense was added to our prayers to make our prayers sweet smelling and acceptable to God. So in Revelation 8, the incense was not supplied by the angel, it was given to the angel. Um, so you can look at the incense as purifying the prayers, and making them worthy to reach God. So since only holy things can come into God's presence, since the incense was holy and sacred, when it intermingled with the prayers, it became holy enough to reach God. That's so Revelations what? 8, 3. 8, 3. 3 and 4. And so that's why David said, man, my prayers be like incense. So they'll be sweet enough to reach to mm -hmm. God. All right. So we, don't, so we don't have incense now and blood sacrifices to make our prayers pure. So what do we? Hmm? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We have um, Christ. Right, Christ. Um, right. He is the, the Lamb of God. Right, He's the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. the sacrifice. And we're both interceding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Let's see who had Ephesians five. Sounds like me. Okay, verse. So Ephesians five, verses one and two. What does that say? One and two. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. All right. So Paul says that Christ died for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. So it sounds like both the... Uh, the offering and the incense. Right, <laughs> so it's both altars. So Christ fulfilled yeah. both offers. So he replaced the blood sacrifice and the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. So Christ, he was a blood sacrifice to atone us for our sins, and he used the fragrance that makes our prayers pure enough to reach God. Mm -hmm. So Christ now fulfills that for us. Mm -hmm. So Jesus makes our prayers sweet smelling for God. He purifies our prayers and makes them holy, washes away our sins. So now we have Jesus. So we don't need incense and animal blood. Let's see. You have uh, 1 Timothy mm -hmm. 2, 1 through 6. Yep. Um instructions about worship verse 1 I urge you first of all to pray for all people ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet times marked by godliness and dignity this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand truth, for there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. Mm. Mm. So what does that tell us? One mediator. 
Right. Don't really need the rest of the, well, incense at least. Right, we don't need the, we don't need the angel. Right. We don't need the priest to stand before the mm -hmm. altar. We don't need the pastors, the saints. We don't need Mary to mediate for us. There's one mediator between us and God now, and it's Jesus. And he's the high priest, too. And he's the high priest. Jesus serves as the high priest. Which is probably where the mediator comes from, actually. Right, so the high priest was the mediator yeah. in the Old Testament yeah. on earth. And then the angel was the mediator in heaven. Now there's one mediator. Mm. Yeah, so that's the, are your prayers reaching God? So now for all your prayers reaching God, you just need Jesus to get through there. Okay. So any thoughts on that? First part. Pretty clear. Pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs>